Today's notes are entitled Determinants and Kramer's Rule. And at this point, we've been looking at solving systems of equations with substitution and elimination. Uh, we're going to take a look at some alternative ways as well and kind of look at the pros and cons of each as we go through the process. So we're going to start out right away here with what is a determinant. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is take a look at a set of four numbers. So this is going to be a two by two determinant to kind of start it out. So a set of four numbers. The vertical bars, everybody, will represent the calculation of, of taking the determinant. And basically what we're going to do is look at the diagonals of, of these four numbers. So you'll hear me talk about the main diagonal. That'll be this one, coming from the upper left down to the lower right. And then the secondary diagonal, as I ca characterize it, and this would be from the upper right down to the lower left like this. And so this is these four numbers here, when we perform the calculation on getting a determinant, we're actually going to get a single value as an answer. And so as you can see, here's our calculation right off to the side. What we're going to do is take the main diagonal, its product, and subtract the product of the secondary diagonal right there. And we're going to obviously see a context for doing this as we go through the process. But for right now, that is going to be the case. Main diagonal product minus secondary diagonal product. And we'll get an answer. So we'll see its connection to systems momentarily. Um, just one thing to note we're at right away here, these two vertical bars with the set of numbers is a determinant. We're going to see um, a set of numbers uh, surrounded by brackets pretty soon, and that's going to be a matrix, and that is something different. So when you see these vertical bars here, what we're looking for is to evaluate it and get a particular numerical answer. So let's go for it right away. Example one, just a nice two by two to start it out here. And so what I'm going to do is take the main diagonal products, which would be two times negative three, and subtract the secondary uh, diagonal product, which would be negative one times four. And so as you can see here, just getting a negative 6 minus negative 4 and should be a numerical answer of, of negative 2. So the value of the determinant for those four numbers is negative 2. In terms of getting the calculation, should not be too bad. Again, we'll see contexts for us and, and, and applications of it as we go through the process. So keep in mind, just uh, especially as you see this next piece, keep in mind this setup right here kind of this main diagonal minus the secondary diagonal, and how that's equivalent to these four numbers set up as a square inside the two vertical bars there, basically the determinant. So again, keep that in mind, and we'll see if we can uh, visualize that as we go through. So what we're going to do is take a look at what is called Kramer's Rule. And uh, again, it's sort of an alternative way to solve a square system of equations outside of substituting and eliminating. And you're going to see this determinant kind of pop up as we go through it. So I'm going to actually go through this proof with you of, of Kramer's rule and, and how it plays out. Um, and I'd encourage you to write down every step and kind of look at it with me. Um, I won't make you regurgitate this derivation or anything like that, but you should be familiar with it. You should see where it comes from um, if, I had, if I ask you. So here, here's the idea. Basically, what we're going to do is, is solve this system of equations. And it's going to get a little hairy here because instead of numbers, I'm going to represent just these coefficients out in front. So for A, B, and C, and D, E, and F, I should be able to solve for the variable based on those numbers. That's what's kind of fascinating about it. The values of the variables are dependent on those numbers right there. And there is a mathematical relationship to illustrate that. So here's what we're going to do initially. I'm going to actually just solve this system right up here, and I'm going to solve it by elimination. And so here's the, the concept. Follow me along here, and let's see what we can do. So what I'm going to do initially here is actually solve for x by eliminating y. That's going to be the prospect here. So solve for x by eliminating y. And in order to do that, in order to solve by elimination, I have to get the coefficients, one above the other, to be opposites. So if I have a B here and an E here, I think a BE should suffice right up here. So if I get a BE on top now, B and E, well, then I would probably want the negative B and E down below. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do right there. I'm going to multiply the top equation by E and the bottom equation by negative B. Okay, looks a little hairy. I'm going to try to keep track of everything. We've got letters galore here. But watch what happens when I solve for x. It's kind of interesting how this plays out. 
Okay, so first things first, let's multiply this in. So I get AEX plus BEY equals CE. Bottom equation, everybody, I get a minus BDX minus BEY and a negative BF. Okay, absolutely perfect. Now, everyone, I'm going to put my plus out in front, and let's add the system. These, of course, guys are going to cancel, which is the point. So I'm going to get AEX, and I'm going to consolidate a little bit instead of plus the negative. I'm just going to do minus there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, CE and minus BF. And I'm curious if already you see a couple things that relate to the top of the page. Maybe, maybe not. Um, the left-hand side is actually what I'm really considering at this point. I probably need to solve for the variable here. I need to get x by itself. So think about this. What's the technique that we would use to get a single x out of these two terms? Well, I think, and I hope you would all agree, that I can factor it. And watch what happens when we factor it out. I get that right there, CE minus BF. Again, I'm able to keep track of everything. And notice my job was to solve for the variable in terms of all of those coefficients. And basically, I, I've done that with one more step. I bring over that product right here, and I get CE minus BF over AE minus BD. Okay. And that, if I know A's, B's, C's, D's, and E's, and F's, I know the variable. That is the mathematical relationship. This, this is how I would get X, no matter what these numbers are. Well, if you kind of look at it in a little detail with the top of the page, um, that should look familiar now. Here I have a product minus another product. The way I explain it up above is this sort of looks like the main diagonal. This sort of looks like the secondary diagonal. This looks like the main diagonal. This looks like the secondary diagonal of two determinants. So guys, what you're going to do on your paper is write two determinants there. Now I'm running out of a little room, so um, hopefully on your paper you'll be able to do this a little cleaner than I've got it here. But basically, here's the main diagonal. I'm going to put the C here and the E here. And here's the secondary diagonal, this. I'm going to put the B here and the F here. And that determinant is actually going to have a name. Here we go, guys. Main diagonal minus secondary diagonal. That's that piece right here. Same thing down on the bottom, everyone. Take a look. AE, AE on the main. BD, BD on the secondary. And that's that case right there. So what I have essentially is my variable, my x, is based on just the two components, the two determinants. If I know the value of this determinant and this determinant right here, I've got my answer. Now each one of these has a name. And again, I'm sorry I'm getting a little convoluted with what's down below, but I think I can still work it out. So this bottom one, I'm not sure if you noticed, but look at these, these letters right here, A, B, D, and E. See if you can spot in the original system of equations A, B, D, and E. And if you look very carefully, look at the coefficients of those on the left-hand side, A, B, D, and E. There they are. So it's just those four coefficients, exactly the same setup there. That happens to be called big D. That's what we're going to call it, just big D. And you can see it on your paper right here. I've got that in. So as a matter of fact, again, this is ideal, but I think I can fit it in. That's big D right here, everybody. Very simply, it's the four coefficients of the variables, A, B, D, and E. So that is big D, and that is the denominator when we solve for our variable. Hope everybody saw that piece. And again, we'll get some practice with this, so keep bearing with it, keep writing down, and keep thinking about it. Now this one's an interesting one too. This one we're actually going to call dx. So just as you see right there, and I'll explain dx momentarily, but let's put that in just because I have it. And that would be cf on one and be on the other. Now you're not going to memorize these. We're just going to find ways to kind of figure them out. Um, we're going to shortcut it as best as possible. So we already know big D is the four coefficients right there. Now dx is not that, but notice what dx actually is. Do you see that the constants pop up? Take a look what I'm circling right here, everyone. Do you see the C and the F coming down vertically just like this? Well, C and F 
which are in the system. There they are vertically just sitting there. Notice they, and I'm going to try to highlight this as best as possible for you, they very simply replace the coefficients of the x. Notice a and d are not there. They get replaced with c and f. b and e are the same. So the way I characterize dx is the constants replace the coefficients of the x. I'll repeat that. Constants replace the coefficients of the x. And then I write my four numbers. And notice, there you go. x should be dx over d. Now we're going to solve as we go through it. And as a matter of fact, let's, um, let's put that in. x is dx over d. OK. Now we come over to the second side. So refocus, refresh if you can. And here's what we're going to do. I am now going to solve for the other variable, of course. And I'm going to just do it by elimination. And watch what happens when we pull this off. So this one, to make it really look perfect, I'm going to eliminate the x's, of course. To solve for y, I'm going to eliminate the x's. And in this case, you know, in terms of a and d here, I'm actually going to do the top by the negative there. It just works out a little cleaner if you do it. It works the other way. It just happens to be a little more visually appealing if you do it this way. So I'm going to do a negative AD on top and then a positive AD down below. So something like that would do. So if you can put that in place, that would be great. Now let's go ahead and multiply that negative D in. So I get negative ADX minus BDY and negative CD. Same thing here, everyone. ADX, AEY, and then AF. Now watch, it unfolds the exact same way. That's the beauty of it. So there are going to be some overlaps and connections, and we'll start putting this together nicely. So first order of business, guys, is to put a plus out in front here and add the system. Those are going to cancel, of course. And again, if I clean this up a little bit, I like the positive out in front. So AEY minus BDY. And same here, I just like the positive out in front. And you can start to see a very similar format as to what we just did. So two components to this, one solving for x and one solving for y. In this case, when I pull out the y here, I get that. And take a look at that one, by the way. That should look familiar. And then the other side, of course, I have that piece. OK. Let's go ahead and divide on down there. And I get AF minus CD over AE minus BD. Now again, I know everyone, it, it looks like it's very cumbersome and wow, how am I ever going to remember all this? Watch as it unfolded. I promise it'll get quite a bit easier in no time. We'll take a look, everyone, as I saw for Y. Uh, I have a very similar setup to what we saw on the top. Those are the operations of really a four number determinant. And so I'm going to set it up as such. So what you see here when all is said and done, top determinant, bottom determinant, Look at the top, everyone. Let's do that one first. Main diagonal, so A and F. Secondary diagonal, C and D. So A and C and D and F. We'll talk about that momentarily. Look at the bottom, everyone. And as a matter of fact, here's a nice connection. Look at the bottom when we solve for X. There it is. Notice it's the same exact four numbers, coefficients, so to speak. And notice they would set up the exact same. So the denominator in each case is big D. And there we go. And notice it's just the four coefficients of your system. That looks great. So it shouldn't surprise you that we're going to name a couple things here. So first of all, big D comes out as the denominator again. That's nice. And this one, of course, we're going to call dy. And we'll explain dy momentarily. So let's get this going. Just a couple things to write in, and then I promise I'll explain dy. So in this case, to solve for y, we're going to call it dy over d. dy over d. OK. And let's see. Let's talk about that dy in just well one more moment there. Let's put this in first. So do I have to memorize dy as a, c, d, f? No. I don't memorize it, and I don't expect you to. Here's a way to kind of remember, though, how we're going to represent dy. Very simply, dy is exactly like the four coefficients, except 
Now the constants, the C and the F, notice, for dy, the constants will replace the coefficients of y. So that's how we're going to characterize dy, everyone. One more time, the co I'm sorry, the constants replace the coefficients of y, and that's the case. So you have the ad from the x's, now the constants replace the coefficients of y. So let me just repeat dx and dy, and then we'll move forward, everyone. So dx, everybody, the constants replace the coefficients of x. dy, the constants replace the coefficients of y. So obviously, it is very abstract at this point, but this is what's called Kramer's rule, using uh, the, the quotient of two determinants in order to come up with the variables there. What I like about this one is it really doesn't matter how ugly the system is. As long as we get a couple determinants there, it's really just the top determinant divided by the bottom determinant. There's your answer. It's foolproof. You know, substitution and elimination are great when the numbers are nice. When the numbers are, are tough, wow, it becomes quite a burden. Kramer's rule doesn't matter. Take just one determinant, divide by the other determinant. There's your answer. All right, well, let's give it a try. So I will definitely do the first one with you and then ask you to, to do the second one pretty much on your own. And then, of course, I'll write the answers there. So as you can start to see, if we're going to pull this off, everyone, we need the three determinants. So I need big D, I, mean, I need DX, and I need DY. So that's exactly what we're going to get. I'm going to run through exactly how this will play out. And again, after the first time now, it should start to click. So as I look at this system there, it's nice two by two. I'm going to try to find the ordered pair that makes both equations true. And I'm going to use Kramer's rule. So big D is, is very simple. Just take the four numbers as the coefficients and put them in a determinant. Three, negative two, six, and one. And if I do this, I get three times one minus negative two times six. And so big D, everybody, looks to be 15. Three minus negative 12 is 15, and that's looking great. Now let's see if we can get in a rhythm with dx and dy. So if you remember the way I explained it, dx basically says you just take the constants, now the 4 and the 13 come in, and they replace the coefficients of the x. So I do that first, it just helps me. So dx, constants, replace the coefficients of the x, and then rewrite. And that's it. Now take a look, this should work out pretty well here. 4 times, neg uh, sorry, four times positive 1 minus negative 2 times 13. And it looks like I get 4 minus negative 26, which should be 30. And you can already start to see what x is going to be. <laughs> awesome. All righty, let's go get dy. You can see, really not too bad here. dy, how do I remember dy? Well, very simply, the constants replace the coefficients of y. That's dy. So it's the same four numbers except the 4 and the 13 replace. And so I get this 3 and the 6 down on the x's and the 4 and the 13 substitute in. Main diagonal, everybody, minus the secondary diagonal. So 3 times 13 minus 4 times 6. 39 minus 24 should be 15, and we are ready to roll. So now we can start to put this together, everyone, really simply here. X as we saw, as we proved, is 30 over 15. And y, as we proved, is 15 over 15. And so you end up getting an ordered pair of 2 and 1. And that is Kramer's rule in a nutshell. Kind of nice. Now, obviously, again, you would go substitution elimination. Numbers worked out really well. No issues whatsoever. But I, I like that piece kind of working through and seeing that, that 2 comma 1 certainly works. As an alternative method there, Kramer's rule, it's, it's, it's good. This is, um, I, I think, a good one over here. So I am actually going to ask you to pause the video for a few minutes and see if you can come up with the solution here. I will tell you the solution is, is not pleasant at all. And if you were to solve this by substitution or elimination, whew, that, that, would, that would be tough with some of the calculations. The thing about Kramer's rule is it really doesn't matter. It makes no difference. So pause for a, a couple minutes if you don't mind. Try to solve by Kramer's rule, and then come on back, and I will hustle on through each and every one, and let's get our answers for X and Y. All right, here we go. So I got big D as this, 
negative 5, 7, 8, and negative 4. And when I solve for big D, I got negative 36. 20 minus 56. All right, everyone, dx. Same deal. I can get quicker with this. The 13 and 9 replace the coefficients on the x, and 7 and negative 4 right here. I end up getting negative 115 when all said and done right there. And again, I would do a negative 52 minus 63. dy, everyone, same deal. Now I'm getting pretty quick with this. Constants replace the coefficient on y, and I get negative 5 and 8 on those x's still. And let's see, I end up getting, when I did this one, negative 149. And so you get negative, oh, what, negative 45 minus 13 times 8 there should be negative 149. Excellent. Now, again, don't worry about it. X, very simply, is going to be this. Um, negative 115 over negative 36. Is that pretty? No, we'll clean that up momentarily. Just give it a sec. Over the Y, same idea. DY is this. And negative 36 is down on the bottom. For the most part, you can leave it as is. I would just obviously change negative divided by negative is really a positive number there. So I would potentially change it like that, but an improper fraction I think is perfectly fine. And those are your two answers. Again, think about trying to solve through elimination and, and working with those numbers and putting them back in and getting exact values. Eh, you know, this, this worked out great. Three quick determinants, one on top of the other to get the answers. Okay, excellent. Let's move on to the next piece. Um, we're going to start to integrate some technology into solving systems here. Uh, so you will need a graphing calculator for this back page. And uh, let's take a look at what's on the agenda. So obviously for example 3, you see it's just a quick 2 by 2. Um, I want to show it to you on the graphing calculator there for the first time. So we're going to do that piece. And then uh, we'll bump it up to doing a 3 by 3 on the graphing calculator too. So I'm going to ask you to grab the graphing calculator. And I'll show you a couple things, see if we can find it. Um, the menu that we're looking at, I think, varies based on the model of the calculator. So you, you'll have to find it if, if it's in a different spot than what's on mine. So everyone, here's what you're going to find for me, the matrix menu. And so for me, it's right in here as the second function. But I need you to find the matrix button and go to it. And you're going to go to that piece right there. And so what we're going to do is create a 2 by 2 bracket of numbers. And so to create, basically, that would mean edit. So go over to edit, and let's edit A. And in this case, we're going to edit uh, matrix A here, and we want four numbers, two by two. So you're going to enter in two and then two. And when you enter in the dimensions, it'll give it to you right away here. And so what I'm going to do, just as it says, I'm going to go negative five, enter, goes over, seven, enter, 9, and then an enter, and then negative 8. Okay, and that's the first order of business is to putting in the calculator. Now go back to the main screen, so second and then quit. Go back to the main screen, and what we're going to do is have the calculator actually do that operation. And so here's how it's going to play out. Go back into the matrix menu, and the calculations that we're going to be working on this unit are one over to the right. And you'll see, actually, it's the very first one, the DET. That stands for determinant. And so I'm going to hit determinant on that. And I need to know what to take the determinant of. So then I go back in one last time, everyone, to that matrix menu. And does everyone see where it says names on the calculator? Basically, names is another word for paste. We're going to paste it to the main screen. So I'm going to do it on, on A there. And so I'm going to take the determinant of, of matrix A, essentially. And when you do that piece, you end up getting negative 23. And if you look at uh, those numbers, look at the main diagonal, everybody, 40 minus 63. And that's negative 23. And that's how it's going to work. So let's do a 3 by 3 now, because we're going to start upping the ante a little bit with these. So let's go back in. So example 4. Now let's come up with a 3 by 3. We can just go right in on matrix A, and let's just change the dimensions on it. So in, instead of a 2 by 2, everyone, let's go 3 by 3 on it. And let's go for it. 
So just type over the numbers that are in there. And you could probably do this quicker than I can. Just be careful, just like doing stat plots. Just want to make sure everything is lined up perfect. Type it in correctly. Okay, two rows taken care of. And then a third row. Okay, very nicely done. And so once you edit, I go back to the main screen, so I second quit. And now what I want to do is the calculation on this main screen. So I'm going to take the determinant of my matrix. should get us there. So I go in, go one to the right, everybody, and hit the determinant. And then let's paste A right to that main screen. And I get 138. All righty. So three by three, there is obviously a manual calculation for that. Um, we will disregard that for the time being here. Three by threes, you're going to evaluate on the calculator. All right, so uh, kind of get comfortable with that piece, and then we will do the last one together here. So I promise you we will find an easier way on the graphing calculator to solve a three by three and a four by four, et cetera, et cetera there. But since we're talking Kramer's rule today, let's try one with Kramer's rule. I'll make a deal with you. I'll do two, and you do two, and then we'll kind of come back and, and compare answers here a little bit. So just like we uh, have two by two determinants with Kramer's rule on a two by two system, we end up with three by threes here. And what's kind of fascinating about it, it works out in the exact same way that we would want it to work out, the intuitive way. And so here's what I guess I'd say. Big D, just like big D was um, on the two by twos, big D, everyone, is really just the nine numbers, the nine coefficients of the variables. And so let's run those across everyone. I've got 1, 4, negative 3, 3, negative 1, and 3, 1, 1, and 6. There, everybody, is big D. Okay, good. Now, again, here's the beauty of this. I'm not going to go ahead and make you put in A's and B's and C's all the way down the line here. I think we can just use our intuition and our results from the 2 by 2s to put this forward. So as a matter of fact, dx is the same thing. So good um, reinforcement on this. Basically, what I'm going to do is take the coefficient, I'm sorry, the constants, take the constants on this side and replace the coefficients of x with them. And so what I do right on down, I do it down here for this. So instead of the coefficients on the x, it's the constants, negative 8, 12, and 1. And again, for dx, everything else is the same. And so we end up getting this piece right here. There's dx. Fantastic, everybody. Two more to take care of. Again, I think we can just pull this off. dy, same premise. The constants replace the coefficients of y. So negative 8, 12, and 1 running right down the middle. And this is looking great. So write in your 9. Those would be the 9 right there. Again, good reinforcement. I think you'll remember this a little more. Seeing it on the 3x3 three three certainly makes the 2x2s two two easier, doesn't it? And then last one, dz just means that the constants are going to replace on the z. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to do one on the calculator. You can watch or do a different one, whatever you want to do there. But that would be uh, the 4. And obviously, guys, you know, the, the logic kind of speaks for itself here. X is DX over D, Y is DY over D, and uh, Z is DZ over Z. So I'm going to do just one more in the calculator just in case you had any issues with it. So I'm going to do big D on the calculator, and then I'll write a couple of the others in. I would encourage you to pause and do one on your own at least, just without my assistance. So I'm going to go back into that matrix menu again, and let's edit. It is a 3x3, three three, and I'm going to do big D there so it's... For me, I can just literally type right over and make sure it works. So 3, negative 1, and 3, and then 1, 1, and 6. Okay. I go back to the screen. I go right back in. Let's go determinant, and let's go A. All righty, so I get a determinant of negative 81. So everyone on your paper at least, let's throw a negative 81 right in there. Now here's what I'll ask you to do. Can you just 
do one of the other three, any one of those three. Now, by the way, on the homework, I won't make you do a ton of these. I think I have maybe one, maybe one on the take-home quiz. You'll just have to see. So um, as you go through the process, obviously I know this is um, a little cumbersome, but three by threes generally are. Again, I'll, I'll show you a more efficient way to do these on the calculator, but, but we're not ready for that just yet. So again, pick one, pause the video there, and come on back. Okay, well, let's see. Um, I got a DX of negative 243. I don't know which one uh, you decided to do, but just make sure it matches up. Uh, DY I got is 216, and DZ I ended up getting, it's interesting, oh, it's negative 9. I couldn't read my handwriting there on my paper, but I got a negative 9. And so remember, basically, DX over D, DY over D, and DZ over D. Now, not the best answers here, but if we were to sort of put this together, dx over d, this over this actually happens to be positive 3. x is 3. dy over d, so 216 over negative 81. Um, I actually reduced it. It actually turns out to be negative 8 thirds. And then dz over d turns out to be negative 9 over negative 81. Negative over negative, everyone, is positive. You get a 1 9th. And so the long version of the story here, because it is a long one, you get 3, negative 8 thirds, and 1 ninth. There is Kramer's rule in a nutshell. So definitely keep working on the 2 by 2s. Got to be able to pull those off manually there. 3 by 3s. Try that on the calculator. I hope it works for you. We're going to be doing a, a lot of work on the calculator. There's going to be a nice balance, I think, between really knowing and learning that algebra and working with it and then using the calculator and the technology to help us out a little bit. Well, again, as usual, please let me know if you have any questions. And certainly I appreciate you listening and, and taking good notes on this.